Today was media day for the Miami Heat, and boy, did we have a lot to take away from that, including some Jimmy Butler emo talk, and then there's actually a lot of X's and O's on the basketball court that I want to talk about because this upcoming year for the Heat is a pivotal one in the Heat's Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo era. Tyler Hero talks about his role as well. We have a lot to get into on today's show. But before we do that, I want you guys to be subscribed. And I want you to know that when you subscribe here at the Heat Report, you're going to get everything that you could ever want. Whether it be news, rumors, or covering media day, you're going to get it all here. So hit that sub button, youtube.com slash heat report. I want to get this out in the open right now. And I am very disappointed that Pat Riley didn't speak. If you look across the league, most executives and GMs spoke to the media today. Pat Riley didn't, and it kind of made me upset because this was a very tumultuous offseason for the 305 team. And they missed out on Bradley Beal because they didn't want to go into the tax. They missed out on Damian Lillard, and evidently they missed out on Drew Holiday as well. And I wish Pat Riley could have spoken to the media, clarified some things, and set some things straight. Cronin spoke to the media. Brad Stevens spoke to the media. Why didn't Pat Riley? I don't know, but it was a little disappointing to me because I would have loved to see his take on things and how this offseason shook out and what the expectations are for this upcoming season. But Heat President Pat Riley did not speak. But let's get into my media day takeaways. And it has to be takeaway take number one. Jimmy Butler is the biggest troll on the face of the planet. Look at how he pulled up to media today. This is a picture with Bam and Tyler forming the big three. And then you've got Mr. Butler right in the middle with some piercings, with some long hair. Like, what is this man doing? Like, this dude is absolutely hilarious. We know what he did last year. He had the long dreadlocks, shaved his facial hair, and then the day after media day, he went back to his normal looking self, how he normally has his hair cut, his normal facial hair. But apparently Jimmy Butler showed up today and he is quote unquote emo. That's the first thing he said when he got to the podium in front of all the Miami Heat reporters is that I'm emo, I feel this way, I'm just representing my emotions in my look. He said to Taylor Rooks that he got angry after the Damian Lillard trade, then sad, then excited, then sad again, and then now he's excited again. Jimmy Butler, man, he's one hell of a character. But he did have an interesting quote at his presser, and he said somehow, some way, we're going to make it out the hood one day. No, that's a song lyric. But we're going to end up in the finals, the time we're going to win it, and y'all are going to say they got lucky, so I'm prepared for it. And I do want to say this. In real talk, Jimmy Butler is a phenomenal leader. A lot of people look at Butler and say he's corny. He always lies. Like people go like to go back to the Eastern Conference Finals when he didn't want to hold that trophy because he said, I'll hold the next one. But realistically, what he does is instill confidence in his teammates. Him constantly believing that the Heat have enough, that Heat will be able to win the finals, they'll get to the finals. And he just gets it out in the air, has the positive energy. He's never down. He's never complaining about his situation. At least he's never done that in the 305. And it just instills confidence in this team. And that is why he's one of the best leaders in sports. There's no secret why Jimmy Butler has been able to lead the Heat to the finals in two of the last four years and been in the Eastern Conference Finals in three of the past four seasons. It's because he can hoop when it matters and he's a phenomenal leader and he allows his other players, the rotation guys, the role players, to be the best versions of themselves because they know that the leaders, Jimmy and Bam, have all the confidence in them. I love Jimmy Butler and I wouldn't want anyone else in the entire NBA right now being my leader for the Heat. And that's why I want to show some love to Jimmy Butler. Spam those 22s in the comments section. He might show up and claim he's emo. He might not care in the regular season as much, but he's still my guy. I'll ride to Jimmy with Jimmy Butler till the wheels fall off. Next, the second takeaway, is Tyler Hero going to be the point guard for this Heat team? Obviously, they were in on Damian Lillard. That didn't work out. Evidently, they were in on Drew Holiday. That doesn't happen either. And the only true point guard on the roster right now is Kyle Lowry. So it begs the question, will Hero take that point guard role? And Brady Hawk, who is one of the best young reporters in the game, he's great with the X and O's. He works with Five Reason Sports Network. He asked Tyler Hero about his thoughts about playing some point guard this upcoming year. Hero responded, 
kind of saying he hasn't really thought about it too much, but he knows himself, Jimmy, Bam, Caleb, and Josh Richardson can take some of those reps when Kyle Lowry isn't on the floor or if Lowry wants to play off ball. And he added this, Eric Spolstra can lead into that positionless basketball that we know he loves to run. But Wes Goldberg had this to say, and he was at the presser. He asked Eric Spolstra this question. Spo says he's probably not going to list Tyler Hero as the point guard, but accept, expects him to have a significant amount of ball handling duties this upcoming year. And it's fascinating to me that they kind of expect Hero to take that role, right? Like, Hero has given the playmaking possibilities uh, in the past, right? Like, he has been the playmaker for the Heat prior. But it didn't go so well. And that was kind of the expectation coming off the bubble, that Hero would maybe take on some of those facilitating roles early on. It didn't work out. And the reason why I don't think it didn't work out is because Tyler is a natural scorer, a natural two-guard who plays off ball, comes off screens, hits a shot, gets it quickly in the flow of the offense, and gets to his spot. Now, I do think Tyler can handle the ball. And if that's the next step in his progression, so be it. But I think I would rather have a true point guard and let Tyler be Tyler. That's why I've always been in on getting a Damian Lillard. Maybe Hero is in that deal. Maybe he wasn't. But say he was in the deal, it would allow Tyler to play his natural uh, position. But I will say, he has constantly improved every year he's been in this league. You see his entire four seasons in the league so far. And one thing that has happened every single year is that his assist numbers have gone up. He came in as a rookie and was flat out a scorer. That's it. 2.2 assists per game. Then it jumped up to three and a half assists, then four, and then last season, 4.2. Maybe that jumps up to five, five and a half this upcoming season. But I do think Hero can be that guy for the Heat this upcoming season. I do have to give some love to our sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. Today's Heat report is sponsored by Prize Picks, and it is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America and is available to play in 31 states. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. We got the MLB playoffs starting tomorrow, and our Marlins are in that playoff run, and I kind of had to get in on the action. I took more than Zach Wheeler and Jesus Luzardo, 12 and a half pitcher strikeouts combo. I think Wheeler's going to deal. Lazardo, his first ever playoff start, maybe he gets the job done. And then I took the less than Jordan Montgomery, four pitcher strikeouts. He's starting for the Rangers. He's going to get shelled. He might not make it two innings or lower, to be honest. He's just going to get shelled. But another positive prize picks is that they allow quick withdrawals and have easy gameplay with an enormous selection of players and stat types, which make playing DFS so much fun. You can go make selections on the Marlins in the postseason, or you can hold out for the NBA season just around the corner. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. One more time, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for first deposit match up to $100. All right, back to my media day takeaways. And number three is that Kyle Lowry doesn't speak at media day. And I think this is such a fascinating storyline. He is someone who we thought the Heat were going to trade for Damian Lillard. And there was a report back in early offseason talks that the Heat were even considering waving and stretching him. But then they came out and said, ah, we'll actually try to include him in a deal closer to the season or during the season. And that's why this is so intriguing to me. Could this be the time that Kyle Lowry is actually being dealt? Because he was at Media Day. He, all 21 players under contract were at Media Day for the Heat. But not all of them spoke. Kyle Lowry actually declined to speak to the media. Barry Jackson, oh, he's getting a lot of people on Twitter ask him, what's up with Lowry? Why isn't he speaking? And he said that Lowry was there, but decided not to speak to the media. And I'm just thinking, this is my first thought, is like, why wouldn't Lowry talk to the media? He's one of the most paid, or the, he is the third highest paid player on the team behind Jimmy and Bam. He's also one of the most experienced players on the team outside of Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler. So why wouldn't he talk? I think it is because a trade is coming, and it is very likely, and Lowry doesn't want to get grilled on those questions because he knows he might not be on this team in two to three weeks. And I have an idea of what that trade is going to be. I think it's going to be Lowry's one-year, $29.7 million expiring contract, plus maybe Duncan Robinson, maybe just Lowry in a first-round pick. 
Because that package right there is good enough to get someone to bolster this Miami Heat roster. I've seen a lot of people float out the idea of Lowry, Duncan, and a first-round pick for um, James Harden and P.J. Tucker. I do think that's a possibility. I know there's been reports of the Heat not being interested in James Harden, but there's got to be a move the Heat can make that includes a first-round pick, Lowry's expiring, which is actually very valuable because any expiring deal in the NBA is coveted. I think that could go help get a piece to help bolster this Miami Heat roster, which is why I want to ask you. I want you to predict it for me. Are the Heat going to trade Kyle Lowry before the season begins? Type Y for yes, type N for no. It's probably the biggest looming question in the Miami Heat franchise as we speak, and we're about three weeks away from the season getting underway. Media day takeaway number four is that RJ Hampton, the person they signed a two-way contract with about an hour after the Damian Lillard trade happened with the Milwaukee Bucks, he excites me a lot. And he spoke to Barry Jackson and had this tidbit, which is why my interest got peaked up. New Heat guard RJ Hampton said he's working on point guard and shooting guard. He played about 40% point guard, 60% two guard in the NBA. He could strive to eventually perhaps move into that early Gabe Vincent type role if things go well. And I think Hap Hampton has not been used properly so far in the league. He is someone in high school who was one of the top recruits before going overseas. This was before the NIL in college basketball. But he averaged 7.1 points per game through a couple of seasons, 1.8 assists, 2.8 rebounds not shooting efficiently as well. But what R.J. Hampton is good at is he's very athletic. He's a decent defender, and he's got good size. So I think the Heat can coach him up to be a good steal. Like I said, there is the 14th roster spot available for the Miami Heat. Hampton's currently on a two-way. Hampton is the person I am most interested to see when the Heat preseason kicks off next week. If Hampton balls out and shows flashes almost like Kendrick Nunn did four years ago, he can get that roster spot and maybe he could be the backup point guard to either Kyle Lowry or maybe Tyler Hero who could be the starting point guard come day one. Hampton's got a lot of upside to him. He's only 22 years old and he was a former number or first round pick. I think Hampton is someone, if he flashes during preseason, could carve out a role on this Heat roster this upcoming year. And maybe he even is more talented than Gabe Vincent, and he provided great minutes for the Heat over the past three seasons. Last takeaway from Media Day is that the Heat are very versatile with their roster construction. And we mentioned positionless basketball, which Eric Spolster loves to coach and loves to do in the NBA. And I think the Heat can absolutely do that. We start with Caleb Martin, who spoke to Five Reasons Sports Network and said that he doesn't care if he starts. I just want to earn minutes and be in the position to finish games. And we know that Martin didn't start until late in the postseason against the Boston Celtics, but Martin was phenomenal in the playoffs, and he closed lineups every single game. And what I think the Heat do to start off the year is bring Caleb Martin off the bench. If I had to predict the Heat starting lineup right now against the Detroit Pistons on October 25th, I think Hero would be that point guard, the main ball handler. I think Josh Richardson would be next to him in the backcourt. Then I think it would be Jimmy, Kevin Love, and Bam in the front court, with Caleb Martin being the super sub, being that sixth man who plays way more than Kevin Love does and probably finishes the game. But I am expecting a big year for Caleb Martin just starting off the bench. And maybe he can win sixth man of the year. Who knows? That would be a great role for him this upcoming season. But another player I want to talk about with being versatile is Jaime Jaquez Jr., who was obviously in the midst of trade talks all offseason long as well. And at Media Day, he said he's been working playing the two guard, which was very intriguing to me because he played power forward. He basically played the four at UCLA. But he's not that big. He's only 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, so it would make sense to me that he plays more soft forward in the NBA. But playing two guard, that is a big step up. But I do think it could actually work for the Heat and Jaime Jaquez to play him at the two offensively because he is someone who is very good in the post. Like I mentioned, he played the three or four at UCLA, so he was playing inside. He would be able to post up smaller guards on him and score and slash on smaller guards and score and catch and shoot from the corner and maybe above the break. But the one issue I have with him lining up at the two-guard spot for the Heat if he does do that is I don't think he's quick enough to defend other twos. Like I'm already thinking about him in the perimeter trying to – hold on to a Drew Holiday or Jalen Brown, and that feels like a nightmare scenario. I love Jaime Jaquez. I think he's going to be someone who 
makes an impact on this Heat roster this upcoming year, but him being the two guard defensively, that seems like a bad idea waiting to happen. Before we close out today's show, I want to ask you guys this. Media day is here. We got the Damian Lillard trade behind us. How many wins will the Heat have this year? They were the seventh seed before losing in the play-in game, making the eighth seed. They had 44 wins last season. My number is 47 this year. I think they win three more games. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section. To close out today's show, Joe Cronin, this is the Miami Heat again. And I tell you what, if I ever see him in the streets of Dallas, which is where Chat Sports is located, I swear to God I'm pressing him. Because Brian Windhorst said this earlier today on Drew Holiday Trade Talks. And he said there were at least three teams making significant bids for Drew Holiday. The teams were obviously the Boston Celtics, the Los Angeles Clippers, and then the Miami Heat. Those are the three teams that, are Drew, that Drew Holiday was focused on being able to sign a long-term contract for. That message went out in recent days, and obviously the Heat were interested in it if they made a significant bid, according to Brian Windhorst. And I got to tell you this. I wonder what the offer was for Drew Holiday. Because I think they would have kept Tyler Hero. I think it would have been Lowry, Jaime Hawkins Jr., and two first-round picks for the young man. But this hurts again. To be in on a player that could improve the Heat roster this much, have to deal with Joe Cronin and the Portland Trailblazers, and he dissed us again? F. Joe Cronin. I can't really say that out on air. I can't really spell it out on the graphic. But I despise this man more than anybody in the NBA, maybe anybody in life. Joe Cronin is someone that I, I told you before we went to the quote, if I saw him, I would press him. He's a scumbag. He's a D-bag. I hate that guy. And I tell you what, you never want to call out someone's job, but the day Joe Cronin gets fired with the Portland Trailblazers, I'm popping a bottle of champagne. I don't give a shit. I really am. When that guy goes down, I am going to celebrate. He's always got a hater in me. That's going to close out today's show. Appreciate you guys sticking around. Like I said, we're covering the Heat all season long. We're going to be doing watch parties. So if you don't want to miss a thing on the Miami Heat this upcoming season, hit that sub button here at the Heat Report. I tell you what, you will not regret it.